Hi there, everyone. I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. <laughs> right, right on cue. And this, <laughs> and this is the only show, to the best of my knowledge, that has the most important question you can find on the internet, which is, "Hey, Jamie, what you watching?" <laughs> I am watching a lot these days, and a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, some old, some new, but mostly good. Something borrowed, um, something blue. So uh, I'll start off with uh, this phenomenal documentary that is about three hours long, maybe closer to four. It's I don't remember the exact runtime, but it's crazy long. Mm -hmm. But it's on Shutter, and it was basically their introduction to their new folk horror section. So you may have already seen it, um, but it's called uh, Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. And it basically traces the history of folk horror and not just European or like English folk horror. It starts there, but then it goes into, it touches on uh, Southern Gothic. Mm -hmm. It touches on um, the, the, like, for instance, things like Get Out. You know, um, so it branches out. Oh, and then it actually goes like all over the world. Uh, it touches on Asian folk horror and things like that. So it really, it's it's very comprehensive, more so than I even expected. But I was super excited when I saw that Shudder had a folk horror, like a new folk horror channel. And I'm like, oh, yes, because, you know, much like you and Duncan, um, I am enamored of folk horror you know i mean that's something that i think we all share and so when i saw that that was a thing i was like oh awesome and then i saw this documentary and i'm like well I, what can i do i gotta watch it and it was crazy long but so worth the time it's definitely worth your time if you were a fan of stuff like that and um or like kate too i don't know if she's watched it yet but i told her she should so i, I think she would get a lot out of it too yeah, I have also Ooh. seen uh, this documentary. It was on my list to talk about as well. And uh, yeah, same. I thought it was it was effing great. Um, I really, really liked it a whole, whole lot. Um, it is, as you said, it kind of goes all over the world. It's kind of broken up into chapters. I'm real curious mm -hmm. to read the book or let's be real, uh, listen to the audiobook. Um, but, <laughs> but I, yeah, I thought it was terrific. Um, it was, uh, informative. There were a lot of movies I just never heard of. And that's always a, a big thing for me. Oh man. I was making a list. Right. Yeah. And a lot of them are actually on shutter now because of their, their full core channel. So that was convenient. For sure. For sure. It, it was definitely one of those things of like, I, this is a great list of movies that I am now interested in seeing and also uh, like uh, diving into, well, full core kind of means this, but it can also mean this. And it, it was just like really fascinating. Um, yes. not, I mean, just because it, it, it's not just, well, here's 30 minutes about the witch finder general. It's like, okay, well, this is sort of what is commonly thought of uh, as, as as folk horror, and this is what is, you know, across the world, what, what might be considered that, but also these movies, because, uh, you know, the they have these elements, and maybe folk horror isn't so much um, about... Uh, a certain characteristics as it is a, a, or a, like a certain setting or something as it is like a, a certain uh, world view within the film and stuff like that. It was just, it was just fascinating. I really, really liked it. I had yeah. a, I had such a great time uh, with that documentary. Although I did have to um, like go through uh, probably two or three sittings to get through it all because it was, and it's broken up into chapters, which was really convenient because it was like, okay, while I'm doing this thing, like while I'm doing some laundry or something, I'm going to watch this chapter. And, um, and that's, I, so we, I didn't just sit down and watch the whole thing. Uh, you certainly could, it's not that it was dull or anything, but it's also, you know, three and a half hours long or whatever. Um, yeah. but I probably watched I, the, the, like the last chunk of it was probably like a solid two hours of it that I watched that 
I really enjoy it. It's terrific though. It was just absolutely the best. Yeah. I, I didn't realize what the runtime was when we started watching it. I I just saw it. I was like, Oh, got to watch this. I didn't even, I didn't, you know, look into it. I didn't anything. I just saw it and hit the button. And I'm like, this is right up my alley. So we're watching this. And then it, it was going and going and going and going. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so, but it was one of those things where I was happy that it was going. I, I didn't want it to end because I was so fascinated by everything that they were talking about. And also I was making my list of movies that I wanted to watch that I had never seen. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, Brian was like, how long is this? And I was like, I don't know, but it's been going for a long time. And he's like, holy crap, it's over three hours long. And, but we watched it all in one sitting. And, um, fortunately I started it really early in the evening because my plan was to watch the documentary and then watch another movie from the channel behind it. We didn't do end up doing that though, because, you know, we basically watched two movies while we were watching the documentary like that Mm -hmm. lengthwise, but it's, yeah, it's, I didn't expect it to be as comprehensive as it was. I didn't expect it to go into the details that it did. And I was really, really happy that it did. Um, the only thing is that I, I feel like there were some editing choices that I would have done differently, just considering the fact that it was broken into chapters and the way that they did it. A couple of the films they talked about like in one chapter briefly, but then they talked about them more in subsequent chapters. And I was like, oh, I, and I was thinking, well, it would have been a little more streamlined had they just kept those films in in their respective chapters and then just gone rather than having to talk about them multiple times um or even mention them and then talk about them more later on i i felt like it would have been more streamlined if it had been edited a little bit differently but at the same time it never once made me go wow this isn't good like no it is Mm -hmm. phenomenal it is if you care at all about folk horror in the least um, and I know that everyone, as soon as they hear the term folk horror, the very first thing that pops in their head is going to be likely the Wicker Man, mm-hmm. um, because that's kind of like the tentpole movie for stuff like that. And uh, more recently, Midsommar, something like that. But it is fascinating to see what else goes into it. And um, I think they start off, I think the first thing they talk about is Witchfinder General and, or at least it's very early on it's, if yeah, it's not the it's, first They kind of do that unholy trinity of like that Blood on Satan's Claw and uh, uh, Wicker Man. Are, Wicker are Man, kind of yeah. All up front, yeah. But uh, Witchfinder General is one of my favorites. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. And so they had me from Go. You know, as soon as they started talking about that, I'm like, all right, I'm in it. Let's go. And it's super fun. I really can't recommend it any higher. Uh, all right. L- I'll tell you what. Let's go a little tit for tat with really great things that we've seen recently. Because um, I agree with you 100%. That's a terrific documentary. If people haven't seen it, get Shutter. Even if you don't have Shutter, get it for a month and watch that because it's. Uh, I'm telling you, so just good. get Shutter. Do I mean because I I buy it by the year and it's less than sixty dollars for yeah. the entire year. You know, so it's it, totally it's worth it. A tremendous service and and it, like uh, the the movie that Duncan McLeish has been talking about forever, Vivid, is coming to Shutter pretty soon. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, uh, the the was it the Inside Guys. The, the uh, movie that they did, I think one of them, or the maybe maybe it was uh, that they're martyrs guys. Maybe it was the, the inside guys did livid. Livid, that's li- what I'm talking li- about. Or yeah, li- yeah, yeah. Livid. I'm not sure. Yeah, because <laughs> you know they're French, but um, yeah, uh, I'll be interested. I saw that when it came out. I would actually like to see it again. I've never seen it, and it's not available here in the states anywhere. I mean, I'm sure you could find it on the dark web, but that's not it's not how I roll, Jamie. No, uh, I don't. No, nor do I. I like to support filmmakers when I can. Damn right. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, but but to get back to the, the original point of um, the the movie that I really loved that I saw recently, so I finally caught up to Nightmare Alley. Holy shit, what a movie that is. Oh, that's the Del Toro movie, right? Oh, it sure is. Oh, my goodness, Jamie. Oh, my God. I wanted to see that so bad. I wanted to go to the theater, and we couldn't when it came out. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I cannot wait. I, I want to see it so bad. I can't stand it. Yeah. So it is uh, a remake of course, of uh, like a 1940s noir film. Mm -hmm. And it is one of those movies. I was talking about this with Duncan. Like I, there are those movies that you just want to kind of like, purple rose of cairo your way into and just live there uh, yeah and that's how i felt about nightmare alley even though almost every character in the movie is a total dirt bag and, and it, everything that happens is just like one level of awfulness piled on top of another despite that uh it, the lushness of that world and the 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 kind of world building that del toro does as far as like this is what the carny life is like and here are all these kind of weirdo odd, oddball characters a lot of alcoholics uh that populate the the carny midway that you know run the show and that sort of thing uh not to mention the the circus geek um and and how somebody uh becomes a circus geek uh, which is a great monologue that Willem Dafoe has in the movie about how you get somebody to bite the heads off of chicken for money. Um, <laughs> and not really for money. You just, you, you find like the most crippling alcoholic you can and uh, like with, withhold the booze from him for a couple of days. And the way he puts it is like, oh, by that third day, he'll geek all right. It's like, oh my God, this is all just terrible and I can't get enough of it. Um, it's just wonderful. Like every performance in it is great. The colors are great. The it it just it's one of those movies that is made by somebody who is such a good filmmaker that it makes everyone else making movies look bad by comparison. And like, why isn't every movie this good? And in fairness, like Nightmare Alley is nominated for Best Picture and uh like it's it's no longer a secret that Guillermo del Toro is one of the great living directors. For a long time, that felt like a genre secret. And after right. Shape of Water, like, oh, that cat's out of the bag. Everyone knows he's good now, uh, which kind of sucks that he's not ours anymore. Um, but it, it has vibes of, like, Crimson Peak in terms of just the atmosphere and, and feeling like this is such a lived-in world that you're dropped into. Although I think it's way more successful a movie than that. Um, it has maybe one of the best last moments of any movie that I've seen in recent memory. Like one of those films that the last scene leaves you with such a sucker punch. You're like, Oh my God, I don't know if I've seen a movie end that well in some time. It's just terrific. Uh, yeah, I can't say enough great things. And, and if you, if you've never seen the original, if you don't know what it, the broad strokes, it, Bradley Cooper just plays uh, a dude who ends up working for a carnival and, uh, sort of through Weasley means learns the secrets of, uh, becoming, uh, a mind reader and, and, or, or, you know, he doesn't really read minds, but there's a whole theme in the movie about like, well, you the problem with too many people is they start to believe their own bullshit. And so the movie is very much the story of Bradley Cooper slowly becoming to believe in his own bullshit and nice. not in, the, not in a supernatural way, like not anything like that, but just gets to a point where he thinks that, well, I've, I'm, I'm riding so high there can never be a down. And as soon as you start thinking that kind of shit, well, that's when life cuts that's you That's when the down comes. Yeah. And yeah. boy, the downfall is something. Uh, Richard Jenkins, uh, uh, you know, Guillermo del Toro, oh. favorite Richard Jenkins shows up in a role that is kind of a villain in the movie, but he's just so damn good. It's, it, it's just fantastic. Um, a friend of mine dislikes Bradley Cooper on account of him being so handsome. <laughs> and, and I would tend to agree that Bradley Cooper is way too handsome to also be a good actor. But this is the, this and I think a star is born are the two movies where it was like, son of a bitch. He's a good actor too. I was, well, I was just about to say, I think he kind of proved that to all the, the naysayers with a star is born, but 
hell, I was just talking about um, recently Midnight Meat Train, which we get a very early Bradley Cooper in. Um, sure. Also, My Little Eye, um, he shows up a very tiny part, if you've ever seen that movie from 2000. 12 i think I don't know if i have or not um he has a very tiny part in that like no one knew who he was when that movie came out and uh, i go back now and i watch it and i'm like look at him being good like he is a, it's <laughs> even in a very small part he's good you know he brings it because uh, i think the first time i ever saw him i want to say was the hangover or i don't because I think Midnight Meat Train was after that. But if I'm wrong, then it would have been Midnight Meat Train. But um, when he hit the mainstream, it was like, the I think The Hangover was his birth, first like mainstream thing where everybody knew who he was all of a sudden. And um, yeah, that sounds right. I, uh, I, I, I've just always liked him. And I've heard th things here and there about him being like, uh, he, maybe he has a bit of an ego or... Um, or whatever but then like i watch him and i'm like i mean <laughs> you know Audit, if he does if, he's kind of not wrong if i know? were that good looking and that talented i would have nothing but ego exactly that's what i'm saying is like i feel like he kind of earned it a little bit not that i not that i'm making excuses for you know you should you should always try to keep your ego in check sure know? but but um if anyone i i think has earned uh an ego it's somebody like that you know right. because he clearly is good at what he does i feel the same way about brad pitt although i've never ever heard anything negative about him that i can recall um he's he seems to be pretty genial from what i understand but um he you know started out as the pretty boy but i think as he got older and took on more complex roles it was clear that he has some talent behind that yeah, that pretty exterior. It's like saying, boy, that John Lennon had a little bit of an ego. You know, it's like, well, of <laughs> fucking course he has an ego. Like, he, he wrote Imagine. <laughs> How did it, yeah, like... and pretty much changed the face of music. Right. You know. Uh, so. Did you see Get Back? Holy shit. That guy was talented. Maybe no Paul McCartney, but that guy was talented. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I yeah. don't know. I mean, he's no George Harrison. I, You know, like... <laughs> I always find people who prefer George Harrison uh, among the the Beatles, and I'm probably I'm I'm the John Lennon guy at heart. As weird as John Lennon was, maybe because of how weird John Lennon was, um, and but I fully respect Paul McCartney. I think Paul McCartney is just a once in a generation talent in terms of uh, what he could do musically. And like I said, if you if you haven't seen Get Back watching him compose these incredible songs while somebody's just talking to him. Like they're having a conversation. Meanwhile, he's like, I think I've got a song here called the long and winding road. And you're like, just shut the fuck up, Paul McCartney. That's way too much talent for a single human being. <laughs> I'm uh, actually, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a McCartney girl. I've always loved Paul McCartney. But, you know, the, the Harrison people, I get it, but also it feels a little contrived to me. It, like that 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 is the pick for people that want to sound smarter than they are right. oh yeah yeah you know? those are the hips those are the hipster beetle fans yeah, who are right like, exactly i i was a george harrison fan before it was cool when in reality you know i think the most one of the most successful songs he ever had was had four words you know, um, yeah. or six words, you know, I, cause you know, weird Al did the, the song is just six words long. That's right. Um, <laughs> well, so it's not exactly all that complex. <laughs> and also like, even if you want to get into like, he did my sweet Lord and that's a beautiful song. And he did my, my, how, uh, while my guitar gently weeps and that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But up until say rubber soul, George Harrison was just another guy in the band. Yeah. And in in later years, for sure, he elevated and became, you know, the George Harrison we all know and love. But while he was doing that, McCartney and Lennon were just churning out hit after hit. And then George Harrison was like, oh, yeah, I think I got something. And he did. He did. I'm not taking anything away from George he, Harrison. I don't think he would have had it if he hadn't spent his time 
with the two of them. I mean, I, I, I really, wonder. I, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm obviously he was talented, but I just, I feel like when you're with visionaries like John Lennon and Paul McCartney, um, then it's going to bring something out in you. Yeah. And I, I feel like it did. You know? A little of that. And then of course, magic you got Ring, Ringo in the back. You know? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it's the old joke of <laughs> what is it? Uh, Paul McCartney was the heart of the Beatles. John Lennon was the soul. George Harrison was the brain, and Ringo was the drummer. <laughs> and I, I gotta say, as time goes on, my affection for Ringo grows and grows. <laughs> I think Ringo is really wonderful. <laughs> but I all yeah, when it comes to the raw talent of the Beatles as a a, a quartet then Ringo is definitely like, I think he's a good drummer and I, a lot of people won't even give him that much. I think he is a good drummer and a lot of the stuff that he did change the, the Beatles sound and made it richer and all of that. Like, I think he, he is an essential member of the Beatles, but in terms of like, Hey, w here's what we accomplished afterwards. Like George Harrison went on to do these, you know, wonderful, like spiritual esoteric kind of the kinds of songs and, you know, Lennon did Watching the Wheels and Imagine and, you know, some truly terrific songs. Jealous Guy. And, I mean, also let Yoko sing a little bit more than I would have allowed, but that's fine. And they were in love right. and that's fine. Um, Not at all. Yeah, I, look, I I'll, Yoko gets a, a bad rap. I think she's done reasonably right by his estate and has not capitalized on, you know, her husband's death. Um but, uh, yeah, so, you know, Ringo just is not the guy who's got, like, what was, uh, his big hit, Sneaking Sally Down the Alley? Like, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't no watching the wheels, you know? No, and he also, what, uh, was it Caveman? What was that? Yeah, was yeah, that yeah, yeah. Caveman with okay. Barbara Bach, yeah, his yeah. future wife, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but... Yeah, why are we talking about the Beatles? Uh, I don't know. There, there was probably a reason. Um, oh my God! It was because we were talking about Bradley Cooper because you were talking about Nightmare Alley. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and this is what it's like, folks. <laughs> this is how our conversations go. Yeah, that's the whole point of this show. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway, all right, your turn. Okay. Uh. So I saw Caveman. Would no? I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay, so um, I mentioned uh, a Shutter. So on Netflix, we watched All of Us Are Dead, oh. which is a Korean twelve episode long series. Uh, about a bunch of high school kids basically uh, during a zombie apocalypse now it, and it's really good it's just very long but it's mm -hmm. korean and so you kind of expect that but if you've ever seen the anime high school of the dead mm -hmm. then it's very similar to that um but i did really like it there there are a lot of great character moments in it uh it a lot of funny moments and uh, I, I did cry because that's what I do um, mm -hmm. several times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely worth your time if you can set aside time to kill 12 episodes. I think it took us like three days to go through it because it's very long and maybe longer than it needs to be. I mean, you could probably go in there and do some editing and take out some, uh, you know, make it a little shorter, take out some unnecessary stuff. But then you would kind of lose some of what I really loved about it, which was the heart and the characters and the interaction of the characters and the growth of the characters, because you did get a lot of that. So um, I do recommend that uh, as well. That was, that was really good. It, it's long, but it's good. Okay. Yeah. I I've had it on my list. I'm kind of, at some point I will catch up to it. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I've been trying to finish Archive 81. Uh, oh, that was good. I, I've had trouble getting through it. It's, I liked it. it I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's, I, in fact, I think it's quite good. It's just, 
it's just tough. I mean, it, like it, it, the pacing of it is just such that I'm like, I get it. Uh, I, I like, it has a very measured way of kind of doling out the information and, and it's yeah. definitely building to something and I'm in the last two episodes. So I'll, I'll, it's not like I'm going to abandon it by any stretch, but it has not been the easiest watch for me. I, I've just felt like, yes, I get it. This is all very mysterious. Let's hurry up and get to something here. And, uh, and it's been a little tough in that regard. Um, well, I, I kind of feel like it suffered a little bit from the same thing that I was referring to with All of Us Are Dead in that I don't feel like it needed to be as long as it was. And I, I think that they took a little too much time with some things or uh, rather just the pace was a little too measured when you're like, OK, like because so, in some instances, you know where they're going with something. And it, it can be frustrating for me if I know where a movie's going and they just won't get there or a show or whatever. And I'm like, I, we know what you're doing. Just get there. You know, just do it. You yeah. know, but I still uh, I, what I enjoyed about it was that. I found when I was watching the present day stuff that I was hankering to get back to the 90s stuff. And then when I was watching the 90s stuff, I was kind of hankering to see what was going on in the present day. So so that's that's a good thing. I think that it's I it was there was never a time when I was like, oh, I don't want to watch this stuff. I want to watch the other stuff. I wasn't I wasn't it wasn't one sided. I wanted to watch all of it. And so I was I was like, oh, what's going on here? And then, oh, but now I want to go back to that. So I was kind of bounced around and I kind of like the way they did that. But I do feel like it was a little longer than necessary, but still good. You know, I still enjoyed yeah. it. I, I'll definitely finish it. I got sidetracked because I started watching. Uh, that Peacemaker show on HBO. Uh, oh, that I have not watched. Was oh, it good? it's a because delight. Oh, it's so I, much I fun. really loved his character in the new Suicide Squad. If you enjoyed his character in that even a little bit, the show is just tremendous. It's, awesome. it's It's everything that the Suicide Squad movie was and that it's kind of irreverent and it's really foul-mouthed and it's really gory. Um, Lost After Dark's Robert Patrick it features heavily in it uh and, and is really good <laughs> um and yeah it's i it, love that he is now lost after dark's robert patrick <laughs> in my heart he always <laughs> will be um yeah it's it's quite good it's very funny and i had a real i'll tell you here's the stumbling block i had in getting into that show this isn't my pig by the way i'll get to the movie i watched in a minute um but the the fact that John Cena gave that apology to the nation of China about referring to Taiwan as a country, I was like, Ugh, I hate this. I hate that. I, and it it's not John Cena's fault. It's just a Hollywood problem of kowtowing to a nation that has a really spotty like right. human rights record. And because they, they're such a big market, though, that the free and independent nation of Taiwan. Like you can't say that that's who they are uh, because China gets all, you know, bent out of shape about it and won't let your product into its border. So you can make a bunch of money. It's just really cynical and I hate it. And so I was really resistant and it's like I said, not John Cena's fault. This is, you know, whatever Warner brothers I'm sure was like John Cena, you need to issue a statement. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that John Cena himself wasn't like, you know, I like brutal di dictatorships. I wonder if I right. should apologize to one. But yeah. at any rate, it left a bad taste in my mouth. So I, I was kind of like arm's length with, with uh, Peacemaker for a little bit. And then uh, just this past weekend, somebody mentioned it again about how good it was. And I was like, all right, son of a bitch, I'll give it a shot. Meanwhile, by end of the weekend... I, I'm completely caught up. I've watched seven episodes of the thing and, <laughs> uh, and, and enjoyed every single one. It's really silly. It's really fun. It's got a, like, it's got that James Gunn touch of here is your cast of lovable goofballs and ne'er do wells. And Oh, by the way, there's going to be a surprising amount of heart underneath it all, 
where as you dig into the character of Peacemaker, you're like, oh, he's actually trying to be a good guy, but has been hamstrung because of the way he grew up and because of his relationship with his father. And the show is very much about him trying to come to terms with his, his actions in the movie where uh, when he kills Rick flag and Rick flag says, peacemaker, what a joke. That is something that has lingered in peacemaker's mind. And he's trying to like uh, resolve the idea that he sees himself as a superhero and everyone else sees him as a supervillain. And he's like, well, why is that? Cause I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Oh, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Aww. And, and getting to the, the whys of that. And it's really strangely touching at times. Uh, the, I cannot get enough of the opening dance sequence that opens every show. And if, if you haven't watched that, just go to YouTube and just watch that. And that is a delight. That's, that's a, like a Schindler's list style, pure good, uh, that everyone who watches it is better for having seen it. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, I don't know if the next episode is the finale. It's got to be getting close because the next episode is episode eight and it certainly feels like the finale is coming. Um, but yeah, it's terrific. Anyway. That's cool. I really loved the the new Suicide Squad. I, I really I, did. I <laughs> loved it. A friend of mine said about that movie, um, he said that it feels like it, it, it was a movie written for 14 year olds. And I was like, that's kind of why it's wonderful. Yeah. It's, hell yeah. It is a movie mm -hmm. that is like, we're going to be gratuitous with the violence and the silliness. And, um, I, I that scene where Idris Elba and peacemaker are just tearing ass through that village, murdering everyone only to discover <laughs> that those were all good guys. Those were the good guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we've got a whole force right outside ready to back you up. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, about that. Yeah, we didn't yeah. see any of them. Um, you know that hand thing that Shark does all the time? We're, or not all the time, he does it once. But he's just like, he holds up, he's like, hand. I right. do that all the time. I'll just, we'll just be watching TV and I'll tap Brian and he's like, what? And I'll, I'll point and I'm like, hand <laughs> and he's like yes very good that's your hand <laughs> i i don't know i just had such fun with it i am such uh, like a fan of the fact that james gunn of all weirdo people has become this giant force in entertainment oh yeah and and i mean he was ours too you know yeah but the thing i like about james gunn is even in like the big Marvel stuff he does, those still feel like James Gunn movies. Yeah. yeah. You know, like they're, they're not as ridiculous as something like Slither, but you see a lot of the same actors. They're certainly the same kind of attitude. And I think the, the lesson that James Gunn keeps teaching over and over again is just this idea of like, no matter how weird and different you are, that you can find your family and whether it's, Suicide Squad, whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy, whether it's Tromeo and Juliet, whether, you know, even in something like Slither, where it is just like, oh, yeah, these are good people at the end of the day trying to do good. And and you can find others like you. And I, you know, it, it's just nice to see that. Uh, and Peacemaker is no different. Peacemaker is totally that story again. Um, but. I, I'm fine with that. Like it, maybe call me sentimental in my old age stories about weirdos finding one another and, and learning that they work better together than they do apart. I will take that story just about any day. Um, yeah, I'm, I agree. Okay. Enough of that. Let me tell you about the movie that I saw. Go for it. <laughs> so um, let me, all right, let me begin by asking you this question. Have you played the Resident Evil video games? Oh, yes. Have you seen... From, from way back, yeah. Have you seen the most recent Resident Evil movie? 
No, I want to. Brian keeps kiboshing that idea because he's like, no, it's not going to be good. And it's, and every, I've seen a lot of reviews about it and everything, everybody says the same thing. It's just that Leon is a, is a bumbling fool and that it's nothing but fan service. But that's kind of one. I, that's kind of why I want to see it though. But it is a hundred percent fan service. Um, but yes, I kind of love it for that reason as well. I don't think it's a great movie. And I think I, I, I want to talk to somebody who's never played any of the video games just to see if any of it makes any sense. Because oh, yeah. if, if you have, it makes a ton of sense. You're like, oh my God, that's the, it's like they took the first two video games and just smushed them together and made that movie. Right. And which I'm fine with. And then you've got uh, a lot of, like, references and nods to the games that are kind of in the background or, like, it wouldn't matter if you hadn't seen it or not. But they just do so much storytelling throughout this movie because part of it takes place at the uh, Raccoon City Police Department. Part of it takes place at the mansion. You know, it is Resident Evil 1 and 2, the games, just combined. And then you ultimately everybody ends up at the mansion, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I just don't know if any of it would make any sense of whatsoever. If you did not know like, Oh, this is actually like, it turns out that they were doing all these experiments here and there is some of that story, but it's pretty thin. Um, but yeah, I, I, I absolutely adored it uh just because it was so brazenly the movie that you thought you were going to see when you heard right, that they were the, going the to make paul ws anderson was it paul ws anderson yeah I... okay yeah the, the the movie we wanted to see when that one came out and then you're like oh this is not that at all right yeah 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 but like that is totally the movie we thought we were gonna get and it wasn't and this is very much the the movie that you expected, and for for better and worse, like it it is completely uh, well, a movie for the fans. I got to tell you, I've seen the interior of the mansion, I've seen the interior of the police station, and I've seen that one shot which everybody keeps being negative about. But that one shot with the the iconic zombie from the first one, mm -hmm. you know, where he kind of looks, he turns and looks up at you. Uh, when as soon as I saw those things, I was just like, I have to see, I have to see this movie, and I kind of got the impression that, and because one thing that I've heard uh, repeatedly is that he took the first two games, smashed them into a movie, but in doing that, uh, they um, every review that I've seen is basically saying that in doing that, he kind of clipped everything, and you don't get much story it's more basically hey remember this hey remember this including the itchy tasty on yeah. the glass oh yeah but, yeah but that's what that's what i want from a video game movie you know mm -hmm. i'm not expecting fucking high art when i'm gonna watch a video game movie when i watch a movie about a video game that i love or a series like a video game series that i love I want to see those things that I'm expecting to see. And everybody keeps saying, well, you're better off just playing the games. I'm like, well, no, because no, no. <laughs> but this is only 90 minutes long. <laughs> but Exactly. This is just a short and I can just I've already played the games. Now I want to see these things on screen to satisfy that part of me that loves. It's kind of like I felt when I watched the new Mortal Kombat movie. I fucking loved that movie because I love the Mortal Kombat series. But and every time they did a little um, every time there was a little bit of fan service, whether it was just a mention, something in the background or a sound effect, I was just the 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 the, the you know, the little kid inside me was going, yeah, you know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of how I feel like I would be with the Resident Evil movie. So I'm I really want to see it. Yeah, I, I, again, I don't want to pretend that the movie is good, um, but it is definitely a movie worth, if, if you like those games and want some good old fashioned fan service thrown your way, then it is totally that. And, and I enjoyed it on that level. Like I had a good time with it. I don't, it, it's hard to recommend other than 
in the way that I just did of like, do you like the games? Eh, you'll you'll have fun with the movie then. Yeah, I um I was kind of on the fence about it just because you know how video game movies can be. Um until I heard Kate. Um and Kate openly had a great time with that film. And then I'm like, okay. And see, and Kate is a person that um she tends to you know, she likes headier films. You know, she likes she likes things with subtext and you know, which I do too. Like we have a lot in common when it comes to the movies that we like. So if this movie, because she also is a fan of the Resident Evil games, if this movie piqued what she liked about those games, then I was like, okay, well, if she likes it, then I could like it too. And now hearing you say that, then I know damn damn well I need to watch that movie now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, all right, your turn. Okay. Um, this is another episodic thing, but now we're going to Hulu. Ooh. Um, I've been watching, there are only two episodes left, uh, tomorrow night and next Wednesday are the last two episodes, but, um, I'm watching Pam and Tommy. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is not at all what I expected. I didn't know. I expected something a little more, uh, I knew it wasn't going to be like a documentary, but I was expecting something a little more serious. I don't know why, but I, I, I mean, I don't know what gave me that impression, but I had no idea Seth Rogen was in it until I started watching it. And Seth Rogen actually plays the uh, contractor that ended up releasing the videotape and holy shit from the first episode, I was in it. I was just like, oh my God, this is phenomenal. He is hilarious. It's very funny. Tommy Lee's very funny. And Pam, there was a lot of controversy before this came out because this is completely uh, unauthorized. And a lot of people were really upset that they were going to tell this story and Pamela didn't want them to. Or, you know, she, I mean, it, it's been, what, 30, not not quite 30 years, but it's been, it's, it's been a long time and she still hasn't really lived this down. So I can understand that. So people were really not happy about the fact that they were doing this, but if you watch it, they paint Pamela in a really good light. Like she comes off so, uh, I don't, I don't you feel so bad for her and she, the relationship that she and Tommy has in this show, and obviously they're taking a lot of license with it, but it's actually a very sweet relationship. It's like, there are so many moments between the two of them that I'm just like, that is so adorable. Like I just, and then you have the Seth Rogen character, the contractor. And on one hand, I mean, he was pissed off and you feel bad for Pam because she didn't do anything wrong. She, this, this, her whole, like, and she feels violated about the whole thing, which is completely understandable. And it's just horrible what she went through because of this. And she didn't do anything to anyone to deserve this. So it's, it, it was unfair. But the guy was pissed off at Tommy. And you can kind of, you can see that, like, you can see why. And then you're like, oh, like, grr. But, uh, so, but you really should kind of hate the Seth Rogen character because of what he ended up, uh, what he ended up doing and what ended up happening. Like you should, you should not like him. But at the same time, I, the way he's written and the way he's acted by Seth Rogen, I can't help it. I love this guy. I, I, I love him. I love Tommy Lee. I love Pam and fuck Andrew Dice Clay even shows up. He plays uh, the the mob guy, the same guy, I can't remember his name, but he was the same guy that, that backed deep throat. And he ended up putting the money up for this to be released. And like, I was like, is that Andrew Dice Clay? Cause he's old now. Um, and I was like, um, but I would just, I'm, I'm loving every second of it. I, I, every time it ends, I'm like, God damn it. You know, like, I don't want it to end. I it's, it's fun. Uh, it's funny. It's endearing. And uh, it's also frustrating at the same time because you feel really bad for her for this. But I don't know. I am in, I am enjoying it like crazy, and I definitely recommend it. Now, if you do watch it, you have to be prepared to see a lot of dong because they actually go for it. Now, you don't get at least so far. They don't, and they don't actually show you really any of the the tape. But um, there are a lot of just 
intimate moments throughout. There's a lot of nudity and I don't have a problem with that, but I really was kind of surprised when they showed like Tommy Lee full frontal. I was like, uh, uh, I, all right, well, I wasn't expecting that, but there it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think honestly, the way that it's handled, it could have been very exploitative. It could have been uh, very tasteless, but I really don't feel like it is. I, I think it's just entertaining and you kind of forget that they're real people. You kind of just buy into the characters that they've created. And even though they use real people in real people's life events, it's 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 like mad entertaining. I don't know. I love it. I am excited to see the next episode tomorrow and kind of sad that there are only two left. So I do recommend that. I've heard good things. So I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited to see it. Um totally I, worth your time i totally worth your time yeah yeah for sure I, I like that's what i keep hearing about is like seth rogan is surprisingly good in it and yeah um, oh he fucking kills it uh, just wow uh let me hit you with a couple of shutter watches real quick um so uh i've been trying to uh speaking of the fantastic service shutter i've been trying to watch some of the stuff on there that i ordinarily wouldn't but just like okay well this is either new or it's new to shutter and i haven't seen it in a while or have never seen it um so i watched um eat brains love oh I which don't know it. just premiered this week i want to say on Shutter, uh, it is a zombie romantic comedy, um, and not really worth your time. I, uh, I, oh, I okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, not all of these are you know fucking outstanding. Some of these are just things that I, I want to throw out into the universe. Uh, it is like I'm a big fan of kind of irreverent takes on genre like it, like whether it's something like spontaneous or happy death day or whatever and like make it kind of romantic and kind of goofy and i'm i'm kind of there for that i really enjoy uh, a good romantic comedy and especially if there's a lot of blood and gore this is a little too broad a little too cheap um it it sets itself up for a sequel in a way that i was like this movie does not warrant a sequel and also how dare you <laughs> um, assume that I would want to watch more of this. It's not God awful. It just feels like there are better versions of this same story. And, and it doesn't have a very satisfying ending. Um, Aww. I would, as an alternate, I would recommend something like warm bodies, which is kind of the zombie version of Romeo and Juliet. That's, uh -huh. surprisingly entertaining um so anyway all right that quick hit and then also uh, a brand new movie uh to shutter as of uh, probably about two weeks ago called slap face damn it that was my next one <laughs> and slap face i enjoyed more than i did eat brains love but i it didn't make that big an impression. Like it's fine. And I'll, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on it. Cause I'll say my piece and then shut up. But I thought that it had an interesting premise and it has a good, uh, it, like it's thematically interesting. And I like what the movie is about and what it's trying to say. But at the end of the day, I didn't feel like any particular piece of it was so good that it set it apart in a very crowded field of horror films okay i can see that i personally really enjoyed it even though you know i feel or at least i did know where it was going from the very beginning like from very early mm -hmm. on um, and so when you get to the end and it ends the way that it does, there were zero surprises. Like if, I mean, maybe there will be for some people, because I feel like you can take it, 
you can take it literally if you want to. Um, I think it kind of definitively shows you how to take it by the time you get to the end of the movie, which is exactly where I expected it to go while I was watching it. So I wasn't surprised by that, but I still liked it. I still liked the ultimate, like what they were trying to accomplish. And I kind of feel like people who enjoy things like the Babadook, where things are more metaphorical, Mm -hmm. uh, would get something out of it. And I did, but the the one fault I had with it was that I feel like it was telegraphed from the very beginning. And so by the time we got to the end, I was like, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. But I still enjoyed it. Like I still, I, I still had a, a good time with it. It was, it was, oh, I had a difficult time reconciling the, the little ritual that the two brothers do. And I'm like, like, I understand what he was trying to do, but then at the same time, I'm like, you thought that was a good idea. Like, (laughs) like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, right. You think that's going to end well. (laughs) Well, and when the girlfriend was like, what in the ever living fuck are you two doing? Like that was the first time I was like, yeah. Right. Like how is somebody else not said this? Like when this kid shows up with a bruise on his face, where and you know he had to absolutely like, like where are the teachers like uh, i i just there were too many places where i was like ah, this feels like i'm watching a movie and not a real thing <laughs> yeah absolutely because i i just can't i can't uh make it work in my head like and i the whole time we were watching the movie i'm like i just can't make that work like i just can't picture someone really doing this and thinking that it's a a good approach to like anything but then i was like well you know okay like i guess like he's young he's trying to raise his younger brother that's the best he could come up with like (laughs) but then clearly he the older brother has his own issues he's you know obviously he has a drinking problem and you know also dealing with the fact that, you know, that their parents are gone and all of that. And there's a lot of pressure on him, but I just, it doesn't, doesn't seem like a natural, uh, it's like, like something that would come about naturally, you know, like just, Oh, that, yeah, I see how you got there. No, I don't. I don't see how you got there at all. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't, I can't, I can't go from A to B with this. It doesn't make any sense, but, the overarching point uh, of the film, I really liked, and mm-hmm. I, I, um, and then I, I was in it, and I did really care about the lead character, the the younger brother. I did really, uh, I felt for him, and even though, he, you know, there were, you know, you, as the movie goes on, he's doing things that you know are not you can't really pat him on the back for him at the same time i understand what he's going through and i and i feel like at the end when he has that final confrontation with the entity and then he's just like are you good or are you evil because i thought you were good but i feel like you're evil and if you're evil we can't be friends and that kind of tore me up because, you know, ultimately he's talking about himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really just, it, that really got to me because I don't know, I, and I, because I cared about him because I, I felt that he was really at heart, he was a good person. He, and he cared about people and he was trying to do the right things. And because of circumstances, he was going in different in a different direction from where even he would have intended, and he didn't realize it. And then, you know, when he gets to the end and he's confronting it, he's really confronting his what's going on inside himself. And it just that really made me sad. You know, the one thing that really kind of throws it off for me on the whole is the police station. Because, damn. I mean, uh, that kid is basically Rutger Hauer from the Hitcher at this point. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, he's a little kid. Like, how, you know, how? But then I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll just take it. I'll just go with it, you know. But 
I did really like it though, mainly because I like what they were trying to say, but yeah, but, yeah, I I didn't yeah, I I didn't dislike the movie by any stretch, but it was definitely it was something I I definitely felt like there are better examples of this kind of movie. Um, I I would yeah, I would agree with that. I and but I will say too uh, that I haven't ever seen anything quite like it. <laughs> like not you know not the the message yes i've seen and yes i knew where it was going but there are things about it that i can say are pretty original you know like where the title comes from you know mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's that's something i've never seen before so yeah you know. i mean yeah you got me there um <laughs> that that was definitely a thing where i was like really that is okay that's where that's uh okay well yeah. Duh, 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 duh. Note to older brother: Don't ever actually have children. Right. Yeah. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, you hit me with something else since we both. Okay. Since I brought up slap face, we'll uh, we'll end with yours. Okay. Did you see? I'm sure you have. You might have even mentioned it. Did, Ghostbusters Afterlife? I have not seen Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm, uh, I'm a little salty about that one, but oh, uh, don't be. I'm telling you, I bawled my face off but by see, the time we got to the end. All right. Eh. <laughs> now, <coughs> this is what I, this is what I love about it. I honestly can't think of anything. There is nothing I would change about it. I had such a good time. And I didn't even want to watch it. I mm -hmm. really didn't. Like, it was one of those that I figured I would see eventually. But I wasn't like, I got to see this. And um, one evening, Brian just put it on. Didn't even ask me. Just put it on. And I was like, what are we watching? And he's like, Ghostbusters. And I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> like all right. I guess I'm going to have to do this at some point. But then as we got into it, I was really in it. You know, I love the characters. I love the kids. I loved the, even the kid podcast, which everybody talks shit about. And he's the one that everybody hates. Like, I thought he was very funny. You know, I, I thought it was endearing and charming. It felt the, the feel of it and the score was like you were watching an 80s film, even though you're not, it's present day. But it felt like it belongs with the Ghostbusters film. Like it fits. And then by the time we get to the end, I cannot think of a better way to honor Harold Ramis. I can't like it just, it was not only Harold, but the entire Ghostbusters cast. What I, I just feel like it was, I, it was perfect to me. Like it, it really was when it was over. I was like, that was perfection. I'm so glad I watched it. I can't imagine anything different. And I just, I loved it. If you're a fan of the Ghostbusters series, not the 2016 movie, I don't like that one. But if you are a fan of the Ghostbusters series that with the original cast, then this honestly, I think, approaches it in a way that is better than anything I could have come up with myself. I just, I loved it. Yeah, I, I know I'm the outlier on this one, and I'm probably going to see it this weekend, as a matter of fact, uh, when we're going to do a movie night. Um, Why are you salty? Because I like exactly one Ghostbusters movie, and that's, yeah. the, and that's the first one. And at no point does, and this is not to diminish your experience with the movie or anyone else's, but when someone says... I cried. I'm like, that is not the Ghostbusters movie I want. That is not what I think of when I think of Ghostbusters. I think of laughing my ass off and, yeah. and watching a bunch of characters that are very silly and very irreverent. And at no point in the original Ghostbusters did I think, this got me right in the feels. This is a movie in which Peter Vinkman shows up at Dana Barrett's apartment with Thorazine not knowing she's possessed and like that is the i that's the movie i want i i want i want the i and i and i think it, what i'm saying is i just want to watch the original ghostbusters i don't want 
the sentimental version of that because I'm not sentimental about Ghostbusters. It just makes me laugh. You know well, what I mean? And that yeah, no, I totally get it. That makes sense. And I feel like though the and, and you will though you you will laugh because it's funny. And it's not until the very end when when it really does hit me in the feels and it probably maybe it won't do that with everybody but i am also you know me i cry that's what i do <laughs> sure and things things that i find beauty in or things that i find like that that make me think of what i loved about something else will have that effect on me and and to be straight up i also cry during ghostbusters 2 when oh geez when the Statue of Liberty is walking down the street and there's <laughs> and they're playing the uh now I forget what the song is. It's j um It's uh, uh Your Love uh, Lift. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When they play that song and the and the <laughs> and they're walking the the Statue of Liberty down the streets of New York, I start crying. So that's that's who we're dealing with here. That's right. me. But the the it's very very funny. It's very funny. It's um, and it's just the kids. I don't always like kids in movies. They sometimes can annoy me. These kids, I think, were great. Paul Rudd is fantastic. Um, and, and then you do at the end get sort of like a. a it's kind of tied neatly with a bow as far as the other characters are concerned, and I think they do a really good job and. Um, and, and yeah, I, I did cry a lot, but it was mainly because like I miss Harold Ramis and I thought this was a very sweet thing that they did with him as well as the other characters. Like I was so excited to see the other characters show up. So it's mainly, um, it's mainly nostalgic uh, reasons that make me cry. The, the, the movie on the whole is very funny, I think, and very entertaining. So I will be curious to hear um, if you're forced to watch it. I will be <laughs> curious to hear what you take away from it and how you feel about it after you watch it. Because I, I, I don't want you to think that the whole thing is just intended to make you sad. It's right. not it well, at all. It's not. And I'm just, I mean, I know this sounds weird coming on the heels of me saying like, oh, the fact that this Resident Evil game reminded me of playing Resident Evil. Um, I... I <laughs> I am not nostalgic about Ghostbusters is the thing. I love the first movie and I I watch the the first movie probably once a year, but I don't look back on it like and it doesn't make my heart warm. It's just a movie that makes me laugh every time I watch it. And so like I don't have a built-in nostalgia for Ghostbusters. I just know that there's the one Ghostbusters movie I like. Yeah. And, and see, so I also I'm really curious. like Ghostbusters too. I've always yeah, liked Ghostbusters too. Nobody else does. And I get that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but I saw that in the theater and it really, it really struck me when I saw it. And it just, I, um, I don't know. I've always just been, I've loved both of them. Now, now, obviously I think the first one is superior, Sure, but, um, I do like them both. And then this one kind of made me remember, I was like, oh man, that's why I love those movies, you know, because it is, it's, <laughs> it's just very funny. And yeah, there are going to be those moments when, um, things kick in that you're like, oh, like it's, it's like a little callback. It's kind of like the, the Resident Evil thing, only not as much. They don't shove it in your face necessarily. Mm -hmm. They kind of do, but not. Um, it, it fits like it's not like it's shoehorned in everything is there for a reason and everything works well and also I you know Ivan Reitman just died that's sad yeah yeah that's one of the reasons that like when when Kim and Ed are here uh, this weekend for movie night I think we're gonna watch it just as, as kind of a tip of the hat to Ivan Reitman and I'll just bite my tongue if by the end of the movie <laughs> If I'm just like, oh, for Christ's sakes. Um, that's, well, I'll tell you what. If you do feel that way, you don't have to say anything to them, but you can message me and tell me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, like the first time I saw the trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife, I was like, yeah, that movie ain't for me. 
Um, I didn't think so either. I swear to God, I didn't think so. I didn't even want to see it. Yeah. I didn't. When I when I saw the uh the little Stay Puft Marshmallow Men jumping around, <laughs> I was like, oh no, sir. Oh yeah, those are a little shoehorned in, but they're fucking adorable. So like, I I'm okay with that right. because they're cute. They're cute as hell. But um, it also just I love Paul Rudd so. He's sure. an automatic win for me. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It was uh, it was fun, and and you get you get the other characters without you know the uh, without you know Dan Aykroyd showing up as a cab driver or something stupid like that. <laughs> right. Just, I, I or really Bill Murray don't... just being like, I'm gonna come into this room and I'm gonna sit down and I'm not gonna get up again. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. It, uh, it. There's none of that. And because I really, ju- I really don't like the 2016 Ghostbusters. I really don't. Like, yeah. I, it's just not I a good hate movie. Hate that movie. Yeah, it's, it's not good. I, I hate the fact that you have to give that caveat of I like all the actor, uh, all the actresses in it. I think they're all great comedians. Um, I think that the best stuff is probably the job interview with Thor. <laughs> Yes. That yeah. has some really funny moments in it, but <laughs> it's just like the story is a mess and it's not nearly as funny as it needs to be. But I'll tell you, I thought it was more in line from what I want out of a Ghostbusters movie. It just didn't deliver. It just wasn't funny enough, but I wanted a movie that was funny and not sentimental because like I said, anyway, I will We'll circle back to this next month after I actually see Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I'll yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know to see what you think. Yeah, um, by the way, I refuse to give that caveat because come up to me and tell me that I that I am a woman hater because I don't like 2016 Ghostbusters and see what happens. You I will are punch a, you in the fucking face because I, I don't think you're a woman hater for that reason. <laughs> I think there are a number of other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just it's so dumb that we uh, that we have to do things like that now. And so I flat out refuse. I'm not doing it. I don't like the movie cuz it's not good. Period. Yeah. Like it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. good. I'm, you know? I'm with you. But uh so anyway, so that was it was is that our time? Yeah, 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 we're done. Oh. So uh that is it for this time. You've gotten Beatles talk, you've gotten Ghostbusters talk. <laughs> Um, eventually we'll talk about something that makes it all the way into the 21st century. Uh, I got Tommy Lee Dong. That's still 20th century. That's 20th century. <laughs> I dick. know. With the slap face. That was 20. That was 21st century. Yeah. Oh no, but I, I don't even know when that movie took place because I don't think there was any, that was, that was another thing about it. I couldn't quite tell what the time period was. Yeah. But released in 2022. So that, that makes yeah, it. There you current. go. Um, there you go all right everybody thanks for listening we'll be back in a month uh to talk about some more movies uh so until then say good night jamie good night jamie